Joining us now from TMZ, the founder of TMZ, the main man there, Harvey Levin. Uh, my first time talking to him on The Five. Good to be with you, Harvey. It's good to talk to you, Alex. All right, so let's, uh, what a complicated, layered story this is. What is the biggest, most important takeaway for you? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I know you say it complicated, and it is, but to me, and, and I, I don't know, I, I've done this for a long time now, it's really shocking. Um, I was shocked today. I, I really had to sit there for a minute and just process this story. It's so huge and has so many implications to it. But, you know, the people think as massive as this is, this is it. I don't think this is it. I don't think this is it at all. This guy that pled guilty today um, has given um, all sorts of information to uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office. And, and they are seizing cell phones. They are doing all sorts of things now. And th I just, everything I'm hearing from people who are involved in this, that there is going to be another shoe that's going to drop here. But it involves so much. And if you think about it, it's not just this one you know, person here and one person there, Felicity you know, and Lori. It's a lot of people. And it's a very sophisticated scheme with two different avenues to get these kids in who otherwise wouldn't get in. And so this was a well-oiled machine where they're you know, picking people to bribe and you know, not necessarily Felicity and Lori, but this guy picking people that he's going to bribe, that he's going to get into the schools, it's somehow working. Everything I'm hearing, and I can tell you about USC, they are shocked mm. at USC. They are shocked at USC um, when they found out about this. Um, and, you know, they've already fired some people there. But this is a, you know, an unbelievable situation at USC and other schools as well. And it's been a tough few years for USC, uh, especially those of us that, that went there. It's been tough. Um, so let, let's talk about Felicity Huffman for a moment. Uh, you have some original reporting about the way she was arrested, and, and this is sort of surprising. Yeah, it is. Um, she um, was at home uh, with her family. They were all sleeping at 6 a.m. this morning, and we found out what happened. Seven FBI agents showed up at her door at the Hollywood, in her Hollywood Hills home, guns drawn, guns drawn. And they ordered her out of the house uh, and, and took her away. Um, now, we were told she would have, she knew this was coming. I mean, she knew this was looming. It's not like this whole thing was a surprise to her. This has been going on for a while. But, and she would have done it willingly. Now, um, our FBI sources say, look, that the protocol is they can pull guns um, just to be proactive, and it's up to the discretion of the officers. But this was a major f show of force at Felicity Huffman's door today. And they woke everybody up, and they pulled her out, and they took her in. So that's a show of force. We've seen a show of support from her husband, William H. Macy, who showed up in court to, uh, to be with her. Uh, the questions a lot of people have is, why isn't he facing charges? Yeah, um, look, I, I, I've been kind of struggling with this all day long, because if you look at Lori Laughlin, she and her husband were both charged in, in that case. Um, I, I can't tell you for sure. I can tell you that one of the things they have on Felicity apparently, at least according to the charging documents, is that there, is, uh, there are phone conversations that were recorded where she allegedly goes over the scheme. So the best I can figure out is that the direct evidence seems to be evidence involving her and not him, although there is reference to him in the indictment. So it's unclear to me, but that's the best I can make of it. You have about as sophisticated a view of this town as anybody. What happens business-wise now for Felicity Huffman and also Lori Laughlin, who's on two shows right now that are all about being family-friendly, one on Hallmark and another one, Full House, Fuller House. What happens next for their careers? Well, I will tell you, um, you know, I, every time there's something big that happens like this, I always get asked this question. And... You know, having done TMZ for 14 years now, um, I am really clear on one thing, that when a story like this breaks, that doesn't define a person for the rest of their lives. And stories take twists and turns, and sometimes what appears to be there isn't there. And over time, people move on to the next thing, people forget. 
So you can't look at today and say, this is the end of Felicity Huffman's career, this is the end of Lori Loughlin's career. You just cannot do that. And we've seen so many, I'll give you an example, Alex. Um, you know, what, 15 years ago? Who would have thought Kobe Bryant was not only gonna come back, but come back as big as he did and get endorsements? And People win an were Oscar. writing him off back then. And win an Oscar. Right. So, you know, everybody, remember back then, oh yeah, you're too young, but, uh, I remember. you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you remember when your parents let you watch TV. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, people wrote him off, and you just can't do that. And, you know, people contextualize things over time, and people move on. I mean, you know, in many ways, the media likes bright, shiny objects, and they focus on one thing, and everybody talks about it, and then another bright, shiny object comes along. They're over here, and this kind of goes away. So I'm not saying it's gonna, but over time, it can. It'll be interesting, though, if you're right and there is another shoe to drop, then the bright, shiny object will be very bright once again on this story. Yeah, and, and I want to say one other thing, if I can. Um, you know, this is not in any way a defense of this because I think what, you know, it's just crazy that this all happened. But, you know, I'm a product of public schools and, and um, <laughs> you know, I've talked to friends who have kids and they're going to these, pri sending people to these private schools. And it's like a million dollar investment, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, from kindergarten onward. And then all of a sudden, you know, what's the end of the road for them? You know, they want a big return and the return isn't money, the return is a good school. And I think that the psychology, and, and again, I, I, I guess I am kind of playing psychologist, but I've thought about this a lot. The pressure that parents and kids have makes them crazy with these private schools and all this other stuff. And I can only think that this is a factor in the nuttiness of this whole thing. And maybe there's just simply too much money at some of these schools as well. That seems to be a, a concurrent problem. Harvey Levin, thank you so much maybe for your so. time. We appreciate it. My, my pleasure, Alex. All right.